Thank you for joining me for this Bible Reflection. Psalms 15 and 16. The Righteous Israelite, a Psalm of David. Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell in your holy mountain? Whoever walks without blame, doing what is right, speaking the truth from the heart. Who does not slander with his tongue, does no harm to a friend, never defames a neighbor, who disdains the wicked, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath despite the cost, lends no money at interest, accepts no bribe against the innocent. Whoever acts like this shall never be shaken. Psalm 16, God the Supreme Good. Keep me safe, O God. To you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. You are my only good. As for the holy ones who are in the land, they are noble, in whom is all my delight. They multiply their sorrows, who court other gods. Blood libations to them I will not pour out, nor will I take their names upon my lips. Lord, my allotted portion in my cup, you have made my destiny secure. Pleasant places were measured out for me. Fair to me indeed is my inheritance. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart exhorts me. I keep the Lord always before me. With him at my right hand I shall never be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad. My soul rejoices. My body also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. Nor let your devout one see the pit. You will show me the path to life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. With a brightness greater than trillions of trillions of watts, it's no wonder the sun can be harmful, and more so the closer we get. Astronauts and space probes use carefully designed equipment in order to be protected. The one who created that sun in a universe of other stars like it is so pure, perfect, and holy that we should approach him with humility and reverence. David's Psalms passionately detail the life of faith for a man who, though flawed, sought God with all his heart. Psalms 15 and 16 share thoughts on right behavior that indicate David's practical nature as well as delight in the Lord. Are you careful about the words that you speak of others? David asks, Who may reside, literally abide, or spend time in the Lord's tent, or settle on his holy hill? In one sense, he's referring to Israelite practices. Only priests could enter the tent where God's presence dwelt, and they had to be ritually pure. It was essential to follow God's instructions when Solomon built the first temple on Mount Moriah. Sim similar statutes applied. The presence of the Lord was dangerous, and contact with His holiness for those unprepared or, or forbidden was deadly. But David also meant his words symbolically. What do you think he was really asking? Today the power of speech is largely disregarded. Many consider gossip meaningless, but a harsh word spoken undeservedly is harmful to both the speaker and the target. Scripture says guarding our mouth will protect our own life and soul. As a leader who had many enemies, David knew and hated the damage of slander. Which of the examples deal with protecting reputations of others? Who can you protect by not speaking ill or refusing to agree with uh, when others do? Universal affection, however, is not necessarily an attribute of those who share deep intimacy with God. Psalm 15 describes behavior that will bring us nearer to God and also affect the quality of our life. How do the words... One who does these things will never be shaken, either inspire or trouble you. David shows that great pleasure results from walking carefully with God when we love the Lord. Loving others who also adore Him is natural. Who are the saints who are on the earth? 
This verse is profoundly relevant to issues such as peace in churches and forgiveness among Christians. Do you see fellow believers as majestic? David says, I will bless the Lord who has advised me. How is this verse related to Psalm 15? Psalm 16 declares that God's presence, which David earnestly sought, is a place of joy and pleasures for forever. Does this affect your desire to change behaviors that you might otherwise have ignored? Simple actions can have a great effect on spiritual health. Even David, a great Israelite king who was chosen, anointed, and honored by God, thoughtfully pondered how his behavior could bring him closer to the Lord. What he learned applied to us as well. The more closely we heed God's words, the more joy we will find. The Israelites had to follow rigorous commands to endure God's holiness. Jesus' death and resurrection instituted the new covenant, under which we're safe in God's presence through faith. The dangers faced by priests in David's Israel are no longer obstacles to us as we contemplate the power of Christ's blood to make us acceptable before God. The question arises, how much do our actions still matter? The answer is complex but crucial for every believer. When someone referred to seeking God on his mountain, Jesus said, those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Describe some differences between meeting God on this mountain and in your spirit. Christ promised, if anyone loves me, he will follow my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. He instructed us to take his righteousness as our own and to follow his many directives for right living. Give thanks to your faith and ask for help in being someone with whom Jesus and his Father love to dwell. If you like to understand the spiritual mechanics governing the Old and New Testament, start by studying Hebrews. And to further explore the relationship between faith and action, try reading the letter of James. Jesus' sacrifice obtained for us the extraordinary privilege of being in the presence of God without fear. Right living makes the relationship infinitely sweeter. Thank you for listening. God bless you and Happy Easter.